Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under with the top 10 free to play Steam games in 2017. Now this isn't going to be a generic free to play Steam list. I'm not going to include games like Dota 2, Warface, Heroes and Generals etc because more than likely you guys have already heard of these really really awesome games. This list features some more unknown games that are still really awesome and I think you guys should go and check out. Coming in at the number 10 spot, we have the first person shooter, Ghost in the Shell, standalone complex first assault online, which is developed by Neeple and published by Nexon. Despite the extremely long title, First Assault is a relatively straightforward FPS to get into, but with a bit of depth as well. The game features all of the prominent Section 9 members from the anime, with each having a special ability they can use in-game. For example, the Major can activate her thermo-optic camouflage for a brief moment of invisibility, while Patel can fire his arm-mounted rocket launcher for a ton of damage. Gameplay is back to basics, with gun control and movement being solid at best. There is a decent amount of weapons to go and play around with, but I do have to say that the customization of the weapons is really extensive, with barrels, scopes, extended mags, laser sights, etc. being equipable. There is a decent amount of maps, with a lot of inspiration taken from the anime, but there is only Team Deathmatch, Terminal Conquest and Demolition available as modes. One thing I do want to go and point out is that this game doesn't feel pay to win and I point this out because seeing this game being published by Nexon would make a lot of people feel uneasy. But saying that all the guns, attachments, abilities and operatives can be unlocked with in-game currency with real life money just meaning you can get the stuff a little bit earlier. Overall, First Assault is a really solid FPS. It's not going to rival CSGO or Battlefield but it's a really fun game in its own right. Now the next game we're going to be talking about is World of Tanks Blitz. Now World of Tanks Blitz is a tank action game developed by Wargaming, the makers of the original World of Tanks. Now before I start, let me make this very clear that Blitz is simply a new version of World of Tanks that was specifically made for mobile, it was made for iOS and it was made for Android and then it was ported to PC. The first repercussion is that the graphics and the gameplay has been toned down greatly. The graphics aren't bad, but they don't really stand a chance against the normal world of tanks. The gameplay is also simplified, making it more casual and thus opening it up to a larger potential player base. Now saying that, there is a ton of tanks to go and play with in 7v7 combat, but it goes without saying that if you have a decent-ish computer, it's worth downloading the original world of tanks and playing that instead. However, if you plan to play on PC and mobile, then playing this game, World of Tanks Blitz, could be an idea since you can keep ranking up even when you are on the go and you don't have access to your desktop. Overall, it's a fun game, but World of Tanks, the original, it's definitely the one that I'd suggest you guys are going to pick up if you want a tank game to go and play. Taking the number 8 spot, we have got Block and Load, which is a sandbox, Minecraft-like first-person shooter developed by Jagex. Block and Load is a combination of Minecraft and Team Fortress 2. The Minecraft influence is integrated deep into the game. It's extremely apparent from the graphics, with the block-like nature of course, but also comes from the gameplay, where players can construct buildings using these blocks, but can also knock them down using various weapons. Every player has an inventory of different block types that they can go and place, like respawn points, turrets, bombs and so on, and it really goes and mixes up the gameplay. The Team Fortress 2 influences can be seen with the characters, which are called heroes. Each has a unique weapon and abilities, for example, Sarge Stone with his M60 machine gun and rocket launcher, or Shinobi who fights with a katana in Ninja Stars. Ability wise, each hero has a passive and an active ability, for example, with our Ninja Shinobi being able to climb walls as he pleases. Unlocking heroes can be done with in-game currency or real life money, but there is also a weekly rotation of free heroes so players can go in and try out the whole catalogue of heroes without really spending any money. Overall the game is what it really shows on the tin, a love tiled of Minecraft and Team Fortress 2, but it has its merits and I'm sure some of you guys would go and enjoy it. Tiger Knight Empire War is an action RPG game, set in the Three Kingdoms period of ancient China. It was recently released to the Steam store in about October of 2016, and I thought I would go and check out this relatively unknown game. Now to put it simply, it's like World of Tanks, Mountain Blade along with Dynasty Warriors had a baby, and this game is the beautiful, beautiful outcome. 
Now, combat is insane. Massive fights break out between the two sides with your character right in the center of it all. You can control your army with the F keys, F1, F2, F3, etc, which give them commands like guard, pike rush, siege, and so on. Now, this means there is tactics, but in the end, it just comes down to the mindless fun for me at least. Now, since this is a Chinese MMO, the menu system is AIDS. It's basically a rule of thumb at this point. You have a Chinese game, and therefore, the menu system is complete, complete trash. However, if you can go and navigate it enough, there is a World of Tanks-like leveling up system where you can go and really level up your unit. You can level up your commanders. You have the person by your side, your right-hand man, and that goes and gives you special buffs and whatnot. But saying that, it's rather difficult to go and find, but it is in-depth and it goes and gives a lot more, a lot more substance to the gameplay. The next game I want to go and talk about is Dirty Bomb, which is a first person shooter developed by Splash Damage and published by Nexon. Splash Damage being the studio that developed Brink and Enemy Territory. Gameplay is hard to go and explain, but it's very chaotic, very fast paced, and it has a hint of parkour that I think a lot of people would really enjoy. Graphics wise, the Unreal Engine puts in some solid work. Everything about this game has a gritty undertone, coated with a cartoon like shade, which gives off a really nice feel. Now, on top of this, the game's original maps are getting updated and they truly look great. Dirty Bomb has three modes. The first one is called Objective. One team attacks and one team defends. And the more sites the attacking team destroys, the more the defending team gets pushed back. The second mode is called Stopwatch, and it's basically the same as Objective, but two games are played. The team that completes more objectives faster than the other one wins. The third mode is called Execution, which is basically Bomb Defusal. Character-wise, there is a large assortment of mercenaries who have unique weapons and abilities. While in games like First Assault, you can really just pick what you want and in the end it doesn't really matter. In Dirty Bomb, getting a balanced team composition is important and is crucial to going and winning a match. At the moment, there is 19 possible mercs, but you can only go and swap between three of them in-game. So when you're in the pre-match lobby, you have to go and decide, okay, maybe I want to go and run the assault rifle guy, the sniper rifle guy, and let's say a shotgun person. But then you have to go and see it, what your teammates are running. You can go and see that in the pre-match lobby. And if everybody's stacking the same mercenaries, maybe you might want to go and swap out for, let's say, a healer to go and make it a little bit more balanced. I could talk for ages about this game, but Dirty Bomb is definitely a title you should go and check out if you want a unique first person shooter. Art of War Red Tides is quite new, being released on the Steam Store on the 22nd of December. It's defined as a multiplayer strategy game, and for many people that title is daunting, given that the genre is dominated by games like StarCraft 2. However, Red Tides is deciding to go with a different, more casual approach. It's more along the lines of buy your units and just let them go at it until the enemy's command center is toast, i.e. a tower defense game. This lines up some pretty epic fights, with a ton of action going down on the screen at one time. However, a bit of thinking still needs to be gone and put in to respond to what your enemy has, but let's say with a counter. A game quite early in beta will naturally have some overpowered elements, which there is at the moment, but with time the devs should go and iron these out. Free to play elements are fairly straightforward, with cash just making it easy to go and unlock stuff. That stuff being certain upgrades for units, loadouts for units, and ream pages that goes and buffs stats. But these aren't necessary at all, you can just go and jump in and have some fun. While not a game that you could go and play for years of your life, Art of War Red Tides really fits itself quite nicely into the Steam store, for people that just want a quick 10-20 to 20 minute match but with really addicting gameplay that goes and brings you back for some more. Shadowverse is the first card game that I've ever gone and included in one of these lists, mainly because I'm not the biggest fan of the genre. But after searching the free to play section of the Steam store far and wide, I came across this gem with extremely positive reviews. Shadowverse goes and fits itself quite nicely into the Hearthstone clone title, but there is definitely enough content and enough differ differentiation with this game to go and really separate it from its main competitor. The first is obviously that the game is on Steam, and that is quite important for people who don't really want to go and download another digital rights manager. Getting onto the actual game itself, Shadowverse has adopted a massive anime influence, which has gone and skyrocketed this game as the most popular mobile collectible card game in Japan. 
Well, similar to Hearthstone in many ways, in one aspect where say, CY Games tries to go and push the envelope is in the RNG department. Many Hearthstone players go and condemn the RNG aspect, where one god hand can get you an easy lethal to wipe your opponent clean. Shadowverse tries to counter this by keeping the cards relatively balanced, with every class having unique characteristics to go and bounce off the cards. Another element is called Evolve, which allows cards that have already been played to increase in strength over time, thus rewarding proactive plays and not just holding onto cards for an eternity. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this collectible card game genre, but I have to go and respect that Shadowverse is a well-crafted game. It has great influences, it's looking up to the main competitor, but it's trying to go and differentiate itself while keeping the gameplay fair. If you guys are into this, go and check it out. Coming into the number 3 spot, we have got Dungeon Fighter Online. Now, Dungeon Fighter Online is a multiplayer side-scrolling action game developed and published by Neeple, the same people behind Ghost in the Shell First Assault. Now, this game has been out for quite a while and has a massive fan base in China, and for good reason, this game is damn fun. Built on the Unreal 3 engine, DFO has graphics akin to classic anime-like games, for example, MapleStory. However, it has more of a gritty look and it really focuses on massive combos and having a ton of fun. Gameplay is relatively simple. Plays traverse 2D screens while fighting hordes of monsters. It has a golden axe type of feel with the movement, as the players can go and move in 8 directions, but Defo has a ton more depth in my opinion. Players can go and string together massive combos, which go and pop up brightly on your screen, and shit can get chaotic really, really fast. Levels are simple, clear hordes of monsters, move to the boss, kill boss, and so on. Putting time into your character really serves you well, as better gear and abilities make the action on screen even more enjoyable to go and see. However, a large portion of the entertainment comes from the social aspects of DFO, one of those being PvP battles. It's easy enough to go and smash bots, but playing against other players will really go and highlight your skill. Along with that, there are guilds, and of course you can go through the levels with friends and people from your guild as well, and that goes and raises the whole, the whole element of fun with this game, and that's what DFO tries to go and focus on, just having some fun. Overall, this game has a massive fan base and for good reason. It's easy to get into, it doesn't have that elitist culture, but it's really hard to go and put down, and it's even more difficult to go and become one of the better players because you just gotta go and master all the combos and master all the techniques, and that's something that I really go and respect. On top of that, there is even an anime about it, and I haven't watched it, so I can't go and say if it's good or not, but it's there. There's the whole combo, Dungeon Fighter Online, as always for all these, all these games, links will be in the description below. Coming in at the number 2 spot, we have got Path of Exile. Now, Path of Exile is an action, role-playing game developed by Grinding Gear Games. It's also one of the best free-to-play games of all time, ever. Not just in the RPG genre, just overall. Path of Exile is one of the best free-to-play games I've ever gone and played. Okay, with that said, what is Path of Exile? Well, PoE is an RPG played from a bird-like view, well, somewhat like a bird-like view, similar to that of Diablo. Now, many comparisons are made between the games, but PoE overall, in my opinion, is more rewarding for long-time plays. In Diablo, you get the cool shit really fast, but in PoE, you have to go and work for it, and that makes the sweet, sweet taste of a successful build just melting through enemies that much more enjoyable. You start in either a softcore or a hardcore league, with special leagues sometimes being available. Softcore being that when you die, you only go and lose a little bit of EXP. Hardcore being that when you die, your character drops out of the hardcore league and into softcore, and it's gone and proudly, pr proudly presented if you're in the top 100 that a person has died, and it's really, really competitive. Players can initially choose from 6 available classes to go and play, those being Duelist, Marauder, Ranger, Shadow, Templar and Witch. Now you pick up gear from fallen enemies or completed quests which you can go and equip onto yourself in a variety of slots. 
All characters specialize in certain areas, be that of two-handed swords, spells, bows, etc. But a certain ability, which you get from gems that you can go and equip, can work on any class, so the potential for builds is basically limitless. There is a massive skill tree where you can go and use your passive skill points, basically transforming your character into whatever you want it to be. If you're playing a non-ranger class, you can still go and use a bow if you like. Is it the most optimal way? But if you find a build that goes and melts enemies more power to you and that's what Path of Exile is truly trying to go and bring that you can go and play the game any way you like. As you progress through the game, you eventually complete the first of four acts. Now, GGG is going and developing more acts every year or so and it just goes and produces even more content for you to go and play through. Now, once all of the acts have been completed, the four acts that are available right now, you can go and start again. You can start the whole story again, but on Cruel. Keeping all your progress, all your gear, all of that, you just go back to the start, but on Cruel, which buffs up the difficulty considerably. And once that done, you can go and do it again on Merciless. And of course, that goes and buffs up the difficulty even more. Now, with all of that content done, that is a massive time sink already. But on top of that, there is a limitless amount of maps that go incomplete, which are basically side, side levels you can go and put into a little map machine. You go and load up, load up the portals, you go into it, you clear it, you can go and get some more maps, and you can just even get even more con to go, content to go and play through. And with that said, there's even leagues that go and join, as I said before, and those leagues go and give an extra element that can really go and spice up the gameplay. I can't go and state it enough, the amount of content in this game is insane, and it can truly be one of the biggest time sinks you've ever played, you know, second the World of Warcraft, but it's definitely enjoyable, and there's one game I'll always go and recommend for RPG fans. When it comes to the microtransaction nature of this game, the only stuff you can go and buy is more tabs for your stash to go and put all your gears and cosmetics. And that's the beauty. There is no pay to win elements. You can't go and buy the golden weapon that will go and annihilate everybody. That simply just doesn't exist. I honestly wish more developers would see what GGG is doing and try to follow that path because it makes free-to-play games so much more enjoyable when it's done right, everybody on the same footing and even though it might seem as a bit of a risk as developers, because you're not going to give in a quote-unquote advantage, true fans of the game will put money into it, and the fact that GGG have gone respected, the free-to-play genre properly, is a massive blessing. Now, taking out the number one spot is Paladins, which is a team-based multiplayer shooter developed by High Race Studios, who made the hugely successful MOBA Smite. Now before I start, this game is basically free to play Overwatch, and that's a very, very good thing. While the devs may say that TF2 is the game that gave them the most inspiration, this game takes a lot of inspiration from Overwatch, and again, as I say, that is a really good thing. When you have a look at Infestation, it took a lot of inspiration from H1Z1, but that game did it okay to badly. Paladins it is a really well-crafted first-person shooter, because this is one of the funnest free-to-play games that you can go and try out right now. It's fairly straightforward stuff. Two modes, that being Siege, i.e. capturing points, and Payload, i.e. escorting a bomb throughout the map. Maps are multi-section and open up depending on how many objectives have been captured for each team, and generally are linear, but have a few complex routes that people can go and exploit to try to get the one-up over your enemies. Now classes, they are no joke, copied straight from Overwatch. It's split into frontline, damage, support, and flank. Assault rifle guy, ninja guy, shield guy, heal girl, so on and so on. And they are relatively easy to pick up and play, and it, it just goes and copies basically what Overwatch has done in basically every regard. Now the graphics are not as good as Overwatch in my opinion, but the art style is relatively similar with its cartoonish look and keeps the game looking vivid while you explode through various locations. hi -Rez is a studio that knows how to go and do free to play. Let's forget the sad tale of Tribes Ascent and focus on the success of Smite. Smite follows the League of Legends trend, the MOBA trend, but it's third person, and there is no pay to win in sight. Paladins is the exact same. Pay some money to go and get some heroes quicker, I suppose, or some cosmetics. But other than that, we are all, all good. And by the way, Smite is on the Steam store as well if you want to go and try that. I personally don't like it, but I know a lot of people do. With all of that said, Paladins is a really fun FPS game. 
If you don't have Overwatch or you want to have some fun with a friend who doesn't have Overwatch, go and try this game out. It's easy to pick up, has a ton of depth and will entertain you for quite a long time. Now, is it as good as Overwatch? That's the golden question. In my opinion, no. I think Overwatch has the edge simply because of development budget. Blizzard put a, a bit more polish into it, but... It, they're different games, but the kind of same games. There's different tastes when it comes to both of them. Overall, I think if you enjoy Overwatch, you'll enjoy Paladins, and I think that is some saying something for a free-to-play title. Now, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this list, and if you did, make sure to go and smash that like button and comment in the comment section below what list you want me to go and make next. But other than that, it's Undercover Dudes all the way from down under. Out.